investigation. So she she is currently under investigation. Oh, absolutely, so absolutely. Said I mean, was absolutely. I won't accurate. I won't show I won't show the camera, but I okay. but I'll show you. Um, because a lot of people on social media think like, oh, this ain't real, that ain't real. Uh, or, or the FBI and after her, da da da. Look, you can see the FBI case number. You can see what the what the what this for. You can see when it was reported. Um, and yeah. that's one of the agents. I talked to like two agents almost on a, a couple times a week, almost on a daily basis. Show your face. Show your face, please. With your girlfriend. Hey, what's up, y'all? Y'all know my slogan. I don't know it all, but I know what I've been through. Now, before we get into this video, please make sure you head on down to Instagram and follow us on our official Instagram page at hookahanonymous underscore. All right? We're able to be a little more explicit, a little more uncensored, and share content freely without running the risk of having our channel terminated. So, once again, Make sure you head on down to Instagram and follow us on our official Instagram page at Uga Anonymous underscore. All right. Now, let's get into what you guys came here to see. Now, I always went by this mantra that when something is too good to be true, it's usually just that too good to be true. All right. And I wanted to do this story not only to shed light on the situation itself, because I feel it got way out of hand. However, I always hate when these social media influencers prey on the less fortunate and end up taking money from these people who are looking for a better way out of their financial situation basically manipulating the poor to give you money that they don't even have in the first place by appealing to their needs i see it all the time where an individual gets on social media whether it's with a course or trying to teach you a skill then they guarantee that you're going to get some type of money out of it that you're going to be debt free somehow some way and then boom you know, you realize that it was all a sham. Now, in this case, we have two individuals by the name of Ashley Grayson and her husband, Joshua Grayson. They have been hit with a whole RICO murder charge due to scamming people. And then when they were being exposed for the scandal, they would try to hire a hitman to kill the people exposing their shady business and anybody speaking ill against them. One of them individuals will include Ashley Grayson's ex-boyfriend. Wow. Got you on video admitting that part. Got you on video saying like you know you are gonna be in Jamaica and <clears throat> while you and while you and your husband in Jamaica you know y'all pay for I mean while you and your husband in Jamaica you know you was gonna have that Olivia girl and her husband you know take care of me while they gonna make it look like you ain't got nothing to do with. Now Ashley Massengill, who later turned her name into Ashley Grayson after marrying her husband, will mark herself as a black strong woman that overcame hardships of being evicted car repossession and just getting it out the mud to appeal to her audience in 2017 ashley quit her job as a post office worker and launched her am pm credit repair business claiming to help others she would first begin gaining attention as a content creator when she claimed to have made one million dollars in just 40 minutes thanks to her digital course recipe now in september of 2021 she celebrated on instagram by posting about it with the caption saying quote one million 39,943 dollars and 40 minutes less than an hour my mom made it somebody call up forbes lol to god be the glory now of course those type of results will bring in anybody vulnerable or want to change their financial status as they would believe that ashley genuinely made a million dollars in just 40 minutes most people wouldn't see that much money in a lifetime, so it was clear as to why so much people would be intrigued to spend whatever it is to get close to those results. With that being said, the course was supposed to teach clients everything that Ashley learned in four years into one little course. It also involved teaching clients how to use their skills and turn them into courses to also sell to other people, and she guaranteed that she would show them how to start making profit off the courses in just 60 days or less. Now, I don't know about y'all, but someone guaranteeing that I can make a large sum of money in just 60 days, knowing I don't have much money, it'll also make me bite as well if I was vulnerable. But once again, like I said before, when it's too good to be true, it usually is. Now, as she was scam people, you know, a whole bunch of people, one person would be brave enough to take her accusations to the social media platform, TikTok, to express why she feels Ashley and her husband, Joshua, are elite scammers. 
A woman by the name of Sherelle Hodge would call the duo elite scammers and claim that the two are scamming people and using the proceeds to fund the lavish lifestyle her and her husband are seen flaunting on social media. Sherelle Hodge wasn't the first to call the two out for scamming. However, she would gain the most attention, where at the time, her video reached over 2 million views but would be later deleted for unknown reasons, even though she reposted it. But here's where it gets interesting. After Sherelle felt like she was being scammed, she would come across a Facebook group of a bunch of people that felt the same way after taking Ashley's course. She would then gather enough information from the other victims and ask them if they wanted her to do a video about it on TikTok, and they agreed, and the rest is history. Let's so scammer alert. I'm wondering why we here and why I got these two black moguls in my background. Legends say that these two right here <laughs> are some elite scammers. Now, before I get into why they some scammers, you would think that they were an average couple, right? With a little bit of money and there'd be no real backstory behind them besides coming from the mud and finally making it, right? Well, little Miss Ashley right here, let me tell y'all about her first. Ashley became known after she created a course that generated over a million dollars in less than 40 minutes. Now, the reason we talking about her today is because a lot of people have come to the same understanding, the same conclusion that she scams people out of a thousand dollars sometimes two thousand dollars to be able to fund this lifestyle that she's flaunting all over the internet now this is what they're saying is the scam now allegedly she has one that she offers for a thousand and she has a bundle pack where she offers for two thousand i mean people all over the world are saving their coins their pennies their dimes to be able to attend this digital course recipe to potentially become a six-figure business owner or as Ashley says she has helped several people accomplish all right let's get into the details of some of the things she has conquered since starting this course first things first she bought this very expensive castle and I want to say if I read the paperwork right this castle is located in North Carolina she paid off her mom's mortgage kudos to that then she met fell in love got engaged to this weird <laughs> to this quirky looking dude right here now let me talk to y'all about brother grayson brother grayson was a young failing black man who started new credit law offering three-day courses for thirty thousand dollars now before he ran into ashley he was out here being showboated and sugarboated by this old white man by the name of robert now miss ashley here was the only one to pay the thirty thousand dollars to attend this man's class and allegedly it was her way of shooting her shot with this man now the stories and everything that i've read which i'm gonna be coming with the receipts that were sent to me shows that this woman indeed does buy the men that she be with now y'all follow along with me on this journey as i show y'all and explain to y'all why this lady is such a trending topic now now nothing in this is proven facts i don't have proven facts i'm not out here bashing or slandering nobody's name i'm coming with the things that she will not allow to be showed on her platform all the real reviews of her dcr course allegedly how she stole somebody else's course tweaked it amped the price and then promoted it as her own allegedly how she bought her own wedding ring and then said that mr man who moved to dallas with only 27 cents paid for it amongst a whole bunch of other things that will come to the light but if y'all interested drop some prayer hands in the comment y'all already know i'm spending up now, as she mentioned in the video, Ashley would be accused of deleting all negative comments that were a part of reviews that customers would post after they would be upset at their results after buying the pricey course. And who could blame them? Spending a thousand or sometimes two thousand dollars on a product guaranteeing you results and not making one dollar in return, I'd be pissed too. Now, Sherelle's video started blowing up. More and more people became aware of the scandal. But as y'all know, there's always a few naive people that feel that someone's hating on someone else or because they are successful. That's what happened to Sherelle. You have a 100% right to go on social media and just say, hey, that course isn't very good. But, but you don't have the right to call her a scam. You don't have the right to come on her page with personal attacks and then get mad at, you, at her when she blocks you. That is weak that is lame and as a broke man, poverty, scarcity mindset. So again, I say this again, you have the right, if the course is not up to par, to complain, to give bad reviews. You do not have the right to call this woman a scam. 
do not have the right to go after her personal life, bring up her husband. That's lame. Come on, TikTok, do better. People will call her all types of names and accuse her of lying on Ashley and trying to get clout by making these false claims. The videos got so big that Ashley took it upon herself to file a lawsuit against Sherelle for a million dollars, but in the midst of filing the lawsuit, she also tried to have Sherelle murdered by hiring a girl by the name of Olivia Oslay from Memphis who exposed it to Sherelle stating that she was never going to do it but instead she was just trying to finesse Ashley out of the money and couldn't believe that she really thought it was smart to put her and her husband's life in danger. She said she couldn't believe it and felt that Ashley was no longer a friend of hers for trying to pay her money to have those three individuals murdered. I was trying to see like with the money like did you want us to come at that like tomorrow or like I'm trying to think of like. Well, when y'all when y'all gonna do the thing with Derek? Because Josh gonna try to come after y'all do it. Ah, oh, okay, okay, okay. So Josh didn't want to do the half and half. This yeah, dude. he wanna do it um after it's done. After you, it's done. you know what I was talking to Brenda? You know what I was talking to Brenda about the Sharae and stuff. I was like, we need to just leave her completely alone because there's too many eyes on her. Sherelle would then take to her Facebook account to let it be known that she found out someone was trying to get her gone and she knew about it as she would type on the platform saying quote just let you guys know if y'all don't hear from me I'm dead the Addison police and the FBI have made contact with me about a threat on my life they think they have it under control but I was told to be aware of my surroundings and to stay on alert I want y'all to hear first before they air it on the news now, after being told that, Sherelle would share a story on TikTok about a night she recalled someone knocked on her door twice, and when she peeked out the peephole to see who it was, she didn't see anybody. Presumably, the knock was to lure Sherelle out of the house, and who knows what would have happened after that. Now, this is where it would get bad for Ashley, because Ashley didn't just stop at filing a lawsuit against Sherelle, she also filed lawsuits against two other people as well. One was against her ex-boyfriend, Patrick Tate, and the other was against Dr. Derricka Hartwell, who was a fellow guru in the same field as Ashley. The only difference is Dr. Derricka was legit, and it seems like Ashley was jealous of her and seen her as competition. On the other hand, she filed a lawsuit against her ex-boyfriend for having a sex tape in his phone that she didn't want exposed. Out of all those people she tried filing lawsuits against, Derricka would countersue for $10 million, and she actually won. Not to mention, Ashley didn't win any of the lawsuits that she filed against any of those three individuals. So things weren't looking too good for her. Now, Ashley would be indicted and charged by the FBI on RICO murder charges, federal, along with her husband. Rumor has it that Ashley actually called the FBI on herself because she was going back and forth with Olivia about her name being on the house that Olivia was living in because Olivia wanted her name removed. It started because Ashley bought the house for a woman who was Olivia's mother, but Ashley never took her name off the house, meaning that it's technically still hers because she still has the deed and everything in her name. Now here's where something's fishy going on because I feel Olivia left something out when she was explaining her story. All she tells us is that Ashley contacted the FBI first, but she never told us why. She then tells us that Ashley mentioned that the FBI told her that Olivia can't threaten to show anybody the videos because it'll be considered extortion. However, if you ask me, why would Ashley go to the FBI about the videos unless you threaten to go public with the videos and either try to blackmail her for money or use the videos as a weapon to get Ashley to take her name off that house? It's one of the two, I'm not too sure, but on the flip side, how backwards is it for Ashley to go to FBI about videos where she's clearly talking about hurting someone or hiring them for murder. Crazy. It's just the whole point, like, she went to the FBI because she didn't want to take her name off the house. Like, what was the point of that? How did I know she went to the FBI? She told me. That was her way of trying to silence me. Like, I don't know what you're going to do with those videos, but they said this extortion if they get posted. It's extortion if you sell them. It's extortion if any crazy. So in attempts to expose Ashley, that's when everything was exposed and Olivia uploaded the videos of the FaceTime of her and Ashley speaking on committing the crime, and that's when everything blew up. With the feds being who they are, the videos would be the only thing they needed to indict Ashley on the murder charges, and that's exactly what they did, as well as her husband. So as of today, no one's sure if Ashley has been picked up by the feds or not. However, she deleted her social media pages for a little bit, 
Um, I think she reactivated it, but she made it private. And all we know is that Dr. Hartwell is the only person she's being accused of conspiring to murder. But being that it was three people she tried to have wiped out, I'm sure more charges will be brought against Ashley Grace. Also, Ashley is currently nine months pregnant, which is crazy because these charges aren't anything to play with and will be hard to deal with for the average person. So imagine being pregnant and having to deal with that. Not to mention both parents are locked up. So even if the baby, you know, is born inside of the jail and they decide to release the baby, it can't even go to the father. You see what I'm saying? It'll have to go to whoever she decides to give the baby to. Now, one thing I like about making videos is the research part. and You learn a lot about what's going on in this crazy world. The irony of trying to have people killed all because they exposed you for scamming, knowing that you did scam them is just absurd. That's just crazy. And I tried to incorporate as much videos as I can in this video to give you a better understanding of what's going on. But it's a lot going on with this whole situation. And it's a lot of people involved. It's like for every rabbit hole, there's another rabbit hole. I try to put the overall basis in the video so y'all can see what's going on briefly. But this story is definitely interesting. And for the people saying, why would Olivia upload those videos to social media knowing the damage she was going to do to this woman's life? You know, whatever, right? Maybe that was the best thing she could have did because who knows? If Ashley is that brave to get on FaceTime and brag or talk about, you know, conspiring to have somebody off, you don't think that Ashley would try to get her knocked off next? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? They said that she went to the FBI and I guess once she would have realized that that ain't working, guess what? Maybe Olivia would have been the next victim. And here's the scary part of it all. Although Olivia had it in her heart to not pull off the crime, there's people in this world that would have took that job ASAP with no questions asked and took that money and we would have never knew, right? And the even sadder part of it all, right? The saddest part of it all is that things like this really do happen in the world. You know, it's just shocking to us because someone was brave enough to reveal it and expose what's going on. But these things are what's going on in the world today. It's been going on. It's just still going on. People are hiring other people to get people out of here. And it's crazy. You would never see it coming because it'll come from somebody that you probably don't even know. That's crazy. All right. Now, when it comes to Ashley Grayson, there's even a lady who says she's been calling Ashley out for scamming since 2014. But people said she was jealous. And it's unfortunate because all over social media, you could tell that Ashley had a lot of people invested in her and buying into her courses. So I'm sure she was really making a lot of money. They said she took someone else's course and tweaked it a little bit and resold it as her own. And it's kind of crazy because people are saying that, that there's no results from it. So if she took it and resold it as her own, it's really somebody else's course. So do you be mad at her or whoever she stole the course from? You know, I don't know, but hey, she was making money from it. Now, the irony of it all is that she called the FBI to get another woman in trouble, but ended up finding out that she was in trouble herself. That's just crazy. She should have just left it alone. As I, you know, research this story, I'm seeing that she was her own worst enemy in this whole overall, overall situation. Because if she, had she just left it alone, you know, she didn't bother Sherelle about the video. You know, she should have just left that alone. She should have just left Olivia alone and, and signed her name off the house. You know, put that other lady's name on the house. And none of this would have came out. None of it. The lady had money and still wanted to get people knocked off. Why? Why put your life in jeopardy and you so successful? That's just totally backwards to me. But one thing I can say about karma and one thing I can say about anything in life right everything is already written at the end of the day she did bad and she got bad done to her that's all everything just happened to catch up to her and that's what it is we see these people we see they successful but we don't know what goes on behind the scenes and that's what it seems like happened with her you know everything caught up to her and now she got to face the consequences but anyway y'all jump in the comments let me know how y'all feel about this man it's very interesting y'all y'all go check it out it's all over social media we gave y'all the basics of everything that's going on but it's interesting and um, y'all let us know how y'all feel in the comments, man. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell so you're notified every time we drop new content. And remember, as long as you keep on watching, I'm going to keep on dropping. And I'm out. So let me give y'all a brief synopsis. It might be two parts.
let's hope it's not so last year on august 28th i made my very first video about how ashley was scamming people how did i get to that point i purchased credit cake credit pie whatever it's called and i realized that the results she was telling me i was getting were not accurate when i checked the actual credit monitoring site so i went digging into her life found the group stumbled upon all the reviews that people were saying about thousands of dollars that they were spending and i asked them if they wanted me to make a video they were like oh that's ssh like yes girl give us some exposure boom i get on tiktok i make the video it hit 1.2 million views overnight not me thinking much of it i make part two because now everybody's interested people are commenting and talking about how they were affected how their money is lost how they're trying to get it back right so after i made part two a few days later i came home it was 11 o'clock at night to a cease and desist letter i get on the internet i let everybody know like dang y'all i posted one video ashley out here demanding that i take these videos down and that i basically reissue some lies about her company did i do it no so i proceeded with what i started i'm not even gonna lie so not even a week later i was served the server came to the door let me know i got on the internet again i let the world know that basically this hoe was suing me for a million dollars the group on facebook did come together and they raised some money i went ahead and i retained kim i posted receipts let everybody know where their money was going and in the mix of us going through civil litigation this woman put a bag on my head how did she put a bag on your head sherelle she paid some hood rats out of i can't even call her a hood rat because i really don't have no beef with olivia she paid olivia x amount of dollars to come and take my life now in the mix of all of that going on yes somebody knocked on my door i got i was literally on the internet somebody knocked on my door i go to the door nobody is there right so then all of a sudden i get contacted by the fbi all of this other bs and they let me know like yeah abc x y and z is going on at boom 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 keep your head on the swivel now a lot of these things i really was just like letting roll off of me like ain't nobody trying to hurt me like ain't nobody trying to do all of this behind no tiktok video not knowing the magnitude or the craziness the level of insanity that this woman has in her brains right so my attorney's like lay low everything's cool you got to go and do an interview with the fbi all of this stuff i'm gonna be right there on the phone with you like everything's gonna go smooth sailing boom we go to the fbi i do my little rundown that pat all that shit to get into the building i do my interview my attorney's right there making sure i don't say nothing crazy do nothing crazy get anything mixed up all of that shit right and we're still dealing with civil litigation at the time now after i did my fbi interview i get on my facebook messenger and i have a message request from olivia she basically was like hey message me when you see this so i responded and she ran down like hey we were the ones that were hired nothing was ever going to happen to you i was really like finessing her because of the situation with my mom's house like basically she was letting me know that i was good but on the opposite side of it i'm like dang you was paid to murder me and you gonna just come and let me know like i'm gonna tell the fbi 